What's up everyone? I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again today with another G.I. Joe toy review for y'all. Today we're taking a look at the 25th anniversary release of Zartan. This particular one is the one with the cool swamp skier. Um, it looks small, the swamp skier. But the figure looks really awesome. Back to the actual vintage release and uh, I'm actually pretty excited about this one. Zartan has always been one of my favorite characters and I'm really anxious to get this one open. I've been waiting on it for a while now so stick with us and we'll unbox this thing and review it for y'all. Zartan the Master of Disguise. This is the 25th anniversary release and it is um let's see the third or fourth carded version of Zartan that we've seen but finally they did go back and uh, go back to the roots of the character it features the card art from the original box set with the uh, chameleon swamp skier as well so it's really the first time we've got the original translation of Zartan here in carded format the card itself looks really nice it's the traditional 25th anniversary line and it's pretty awesome looking Got the Swamp Skier down here, Zartan and all the accessories. It just looks really nice in the package. Flipping it over to the back, you've got the traditional file card here, along with the other figures in this particular set. So, yeah, pretty standard stuff. And I guess because we saw that particular style for so many years back in the vintage line, it just works really well for me, and I do like this one. But regardless of how well I like it, we're cutting it open. So as I mentioned before, this uh, particular figure originally came as part of a box set. It came packaged with Zartan and his Swamp Skier. And they had the additional little storage boat uh, box thing so we've got the figure out and now we can toss this in the recycling pile we have the itsy bitsy little swamp skier which looks ridiculous but uh, it's still it's the swamp skier let's go ahead and pull the figure out we have his backpack and a battle stand we've got his pistol uh, these accessories are taped in so you may have to get out the little knife again you gotta get out the little knife to get out the little knife. Which is cool. And then also the additional heads here are also taped in. Let's see if we can get them freed. You've got two masks this time. A Duke mask and a Storm Shadow mask and now this is all recycling as well So here's everything that comes in the set And we'll go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look at it Taking a look at the battle stand here. It's uh, the traditional 25th anniversary battle stand got the Cobra symbol here and one foot peg um, I don't know what decision they used to make to decide between one or two pegs, but this one does have the single peg and the code name Zartan on the front, so pretty standard, nothing big about that. Um, let's go with the figure itself to begin with and then we'll come back to the accessories. So Zartan himself looks really nice. 
Uh, this is his classic look and comes about as close to the vintage release as you can come, to be honest with you. Um, not the only thing that doesn't have the C off the bat. So in the original vintage line, these knee pads here, or thigh pads, were actually a secondary molded piece, and you could pop them off. Uh, they are painted on in this particular case. And his chest piece used to be removable, and it had like the clear thing. This one is just a single molded plastic piece. But again, some nice detail work going on here. Really cool shoulder pads. Lots of detail work in his boots. <clears throat> you can see the uh, buckles very distinctively down there. Cool little accessories on his belt. And then just in general, the hood itself has quite a bit of detail work on it. And just looks really nice. So he's got that kind of menacing facial expression going on. So yeah, this is pretty cool looking. Articulation wise, the head does rotate 360 degrees. Uh, you just have to be careful of that hood so it doesn't get caught on his uh, chest piece there. Up and down motion is not all that good, but you've got some play there anyways. Uh, the shoulders are the traditional swivel and rotate. So full range of motion there. Um, the shoulder pads themselves do limit him from being able to raise his arms above just shoulder height. So if you want it to do anything else, you'll have to rotate it up. Which is a little bit of a shame, but not too bad. Standard uh, swivel and ball joint. Ah, a little stiff right there at the elbow. But full range of motion there. And then the wrist is the, just a swivel. So, no big surprises there. He does have the ab crunch feature. So, twist at the rib cage and can do the ab crunch. Uh, again, it is a little bit limited by his chest piece, but not too badly. Traditional T hooks for the waist does have the double knee joint and the ball and rocker at the ankle so full articulation there as well so all in all all the good stuff that we're looking for and it just works I will point out that on his uh, right leg the bottom of his boot he does have a sheath for his knife and we'll put it in there here in a few moments but I do like that they remember to include those things if only he had a holster for his pistol as well, this would be awesome. Moving on to the accessories. We've got this really tiny knife. And let's see if I can get this thing to focus in for us. It's got some detail work on it, and it looks really nice. But it's a pretty standard small knife. It does fit in his hand easily enough and it's uh, tight and secure so it's not going to fall out luckily and as we mentioned just a few moments ago a sheath for the knife to put in and it goes in there and holds in place you're not going to lose it there so that's pretty awesome we also have his standard pistol it's got some fairly decent detail work going on in here not a lot, but enough. And it's just a nice, cool looking pistol, to be honest with you. I do like the looks of it. Again, he doesn't have a holster. But if it's in his hand and he holds it securely, and you don't have to worry about it being loose or anything like that, so it works and works well. So, pistols, check. His backpack is a two-piece set uh, with a hinge joint in the middle, so it's really one piece, but it does fold up like so, and it does have this little latching mechanism to lock it in place and close it up, so 
pretty cool. Uh, some nice detail work on the front of it, or the back of it, depending on how you're looking at it. And then inside, we've also got some really nice detail work going on, if I can catch the light just right. Some little intricate little doodads there that's supposed to be representative of like his uh, crazy mech tech camouflage stuff. <laughs> And there's just enough room in there for his uh, two masks to hide. So you do have to kind of stack them on top of one another. Then you lock it up. And it just, um, well, that's interesting. So, normally this just pegs into the back of the figure's back. Uh, but in this particular case, his chest harness is just at the right spot where you can't do that and there's not an actual hole in that chest piece for the back so what I'm going to try to do is try to just uh, slide it down enough to try to get access to that uh, peg hole I'll see if we can get this to work Yes. So, if you do that, you can put it on his back. Uh, it just makes his chest piece ride a little high. But you can get it to work. Uh, I really don't know why they overlooked that. Or if it's just on mine. That's a pretty big oversight, though. And it does make it ride a little bit high on his back. So that's a... Uh, Definitely kind of odd. And it's a shame too. But it does fit. You can make it work. But you'll have to make it work though. It's not going to do it by itself. Moving on, we'll go ahead and take a look at these masks. So you've got two of them here. One is a sculpted Duke face or a generic soldier face depending on how you want to look at it and it's just a half mask the way these work is you take these and you just uh, slip them on his face underneath his uh, cloth cloak mask thing there we go and you kind of have to push on it a little bit to get it to go in the right way luckily the hood is uh, pretty flexible so there you go, press it in place and now he's in disguise. Doesn't quite work as well as uh, I remember, but it does work. And then the other face is the Storm Shadow one or a generic ninja if you prefer to look at it like that. And that one fit on a lot easier. You can see how it looks there. So it's not bad. And when he's not wearing it, you just store them in the backpack. And voila! Moving on to the Swamp Skier. This is the Chameleon. There is a lot of really cool sculpting going on on this thing. And it looks pretty cool uh, especially if you've never seen the original so if you look on the bottom here there's this big turbine engine thing and then these handlebars do rotate up and down so it's a uh, pretty cool looking got the chameleon stamp on it right there control panel here They got a little bit sloppy on the paint apps for the bottom half where they painted it that darker green. Uh, it's not a nice clean line right there. And then on the other side, they almost missed half of it completely. But all in all, it's not too bad. As far as the figure goes, he can fit on this thing and ride it pretty easily. 
grab hold of the handlebars. Work with me here. His crazy pistol grip hands. There we go. Make it a little bit hard to get it on there to begin with, but uh, once you get it in place, it does work. He does kind of have to sit down on it pretty hard like that. So he leans forward quite a bit. Um, but you can also turn them around and let them ride this direction if you want. That doesn't work a whole lot better. So chances are he's uh, pretty much going to be riding on his knees for most of the time. So as you can probably tell by now, uh, the biggest issue uh, with this particular swamp skier is the size. It is a teensy tiny chameleon. It's a little cricket chameleon. It's nice that they included it. I just wish that they'd made it a little bit bigger because it just uh, it sucks to have such a really cool awesome figure and have him not be able to take full advantage of the swamp skier he's known for. But again it's nice that they included it regardless. Uh, it's a really cool looking thing. You can kind of stick his arms in it and he can uh, carry it with him. I was thinking maybe you could get it to his arms to go all the way through these and carry it like a backpack. So that's what I'm going to try to do here, but I don't think that's going to work. His arms don't quite bend enough to be able to facilitate that. So, yeah, it's a little bit limited. Really cool concept, not a great execution to be honest with you. So aside from the Swamp Skier, the Zartan figure itself is an awesome A+. It works really well. Take away the backpack and the Swamp Skier and unfortunately you're left with just a really nice figure with a pistol and a knife. So it may not be worth as much to you to pick it up that way but it's nice again to have the chameleon finally so yeah I like the set again I do wish the swamp skier was bigger but that's the only real drawback I see and the fact that his backpack doesn't fit right so yeah take that for what you will still a cool looking figure I still recommend it That's our review for the G.I. Joe 25th Anniversary Zartan figure with the Swamp Skier. Overall, great figure, terrible Swamp Skier. That's all the time we've got for today, so thanks for watching. Feel free to check out some of our other videos and uh, subscribe to our channel to catch more coming down the pipe. Drop some comments down below. Until next time, yo Joe.